Hello and welcome to the series of class 11 practical session. Today we will do an experiment to find Young's modulus of a material and verify Hooke's law. Before we start this experiment, I recommend you to check our previous videos for better understanding. Check our website www.labcafe.com slash blog for the manual of the same experiment. The aim of the experiment is to determine Young's modulus of elasticity of a material of a given wire. Apparatus required. A Searle's apparatus two long steel wire of same length and diameter, one meter scale, a screw gauge, half kg dead load, slotted weight with hanger, graph paper and a ruler. A cell separator consists of two metal frames, F1 and F2, hinged together such that they can move relative to each other in a vertical direction. Each frame has torsion head D and B at the upper side and hook H1 and H2 at the lower side. These frames are suspended from two wires AB and CD from the same material, length and cross-section. The upper ends of the wires are screwed tightly in two torsion heads A and C fixed in same rigid support, where AB is called experimental wire and where CD is called auxiliary or reference wire. A spirit level rests horizontally with its one end hinged in the frame F2. The other end of the spirit level rests on the tip of the spirometer screw fitted in the frame 1. The spirometer screw can be rotated up and down along a vertical pitch scale marked in the millimeter. The micrometer screw has a disc having 100 equal divisions along its circumference. A linear scale or pitch scale is attached vertically. If there is any relative displacement between the two frames, the spirit level no longer remains horizontal and the bubble of the spirit level is displaced from its center. A constant weight or dead load is suspended from the hook H2 of the frame F2 attached to the auxiliary wire CD, which keeps the wire taut. The experimental wire AB can be loaded by adding slotted weights on this hanger. When the additional loads are applied or removed, the experimental wire extends or contracts. That disturbs the spirit level. Then, by adjusting the spirometer screw or micrometer screw, the spirit level is restored to its initial position. From the amount of rotation of the micrometer screw, we get the elongation. Searle's apparatus works on a principle of Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that within the limit of elasticity, stress is applied directly proportional to the strain produced. That is, the extension produced in a wire is directly proportional to the load attached to it. Let L is the length of the experimental wire. D is the diameter of the wire, M is the mass of the load applied at the free end of the wire, I is the extension of the wire. So the area of cross section of the wire A equals to pi d square by 4. Therefore, the longitudinal stress is W by A equals to Mg by A and the longitudinal strain is L by capital L. Within the elastic limit, according to Hooke's law, longitudinal stress by longitudinal strength is Young's modulus. Therefore, y equals to 4g l by pi d square into m by l. Knowing l, d and finding small l from the known mg, y can be calculated. Before we proceed further, let's have a close look on Searle's apparatus and calculate some essential parameters for the experiment. This is the Searle's apparatus. It has two frames, two torsion screws, spirometer, spirit level and two hangers. When we do experiment, we try to keep the bubble just touching to one of the reference line on the spirit level because the wire which we use is very rigid. Therefore, when we add weights, the extension is very less. For better understanding of extension, we have to keep the bubble just touching to the reference line. Now let's calculate the pitch and list count of this parameter. As you can see, the circular disc has 100 divisions on it. And on the main scale, above 0, 10 divisions, below 0, 10 divisions. And each of the divisions are in millimeter. Now, to calculate the pitch, I will make the circular scale's upper edge at 0 when the circular scales 0 is coinciding with the pitch scales 0 and then 
I give one complete rotation on the circular disc and we can see that the linear scale has moved by one division. Therefore, the pitch is one complete rotation on circular disc divided by one pitch scale moving. So the list count is 1 by total number of division which is 100. Therefore, it is 0 0.01 millimeter. We have to measure the diameter of the given wear. This is the steel wear. To do so, we need a screw gauge. And this is our screw gauge. As you can see, the screw gauge has a circular scale having 50 divisions on it. And there is a linear scale which is from 0 to 25 mm. You can see from 0 to 5 there are 5 divisions which means each of the divisions is 1 millimeter. You can also see there is another division between each of the one divisions. So each of the divisions are 0.5 millimeter. So if this is 0, then this will be 0.5, this will be 1, this will be 1.5 and so on. Now our screw gauge has no zero error. The zero of the circular scale is coinciding with the reference line. So what is the least count? To do so, first we need to find the pitch of the screw gauge. Therefore, I make the zero of the circular scale coinciding with five. Now I give two complete rotation. This is one, two. And now we see the movement is one millimeter on the linear scale. So therefore, pitch of the screw gauge is 1 by 2 is 0 0.5. The total division is 50. Therefore, the list count is 0 0.5 by 50 equals to 0 0.01 millimeter. Let's measure the diameter of the wire. As you can see, on the main scale, it is 0 0.5. On the circular scale, it is 5. So 0.5 plus 5 into 0 0.01 is 0 0.55. That is the diameter of this wire. So we have to do the same for three different places and get the average of the diameters. After calculating the mean diameter of the wire, we must know what is the maximum load that we can apply on the wire without deformation in the material. This is called limiting load. From the table, the breaking stress of the material is 11,230 kg weight per centimeter square. By definition, breaking load is breaking stress into area of the cross section of the wear equals to breaking stress into pi d square by 4 equals to 11,230 into 3.14 into 0.053 square by 4 which is equals to 24.77 kg weight. Now the limiting weight is half of the breaking load equals to 12.29 kg weight, which means the maximum load capacity of the wear is 12.29 kg weight within the elastic limit. First, I have hung the soil separators with two steel wires with the help of these torsion screws. This is our experimental wear and this is our reference wear. The length of each of the wires is 1 meter. We measure the length using a meter scale. After that, we need to make sure that both of the wires are kink free. To remove such kink, I have taken a piece of cloth, press with my thumbnail strongly and move along the length of the wire. Now the apparatus is ready for the experiment. Once it is done, we have to measure the diameter of the wear in three different places using the screw gauge. I have taken one reading from here, one from here and one reading from here. The mean diameter is 0.053 cm. After that, I will hang a standard weight to the reference wire.
and I will also hang a equal weight hanger to the experimental wire. Now I will make the bubble to touch just on the reference line marked on the spirit level by rotating the screw of the spirometer. So to do so, I will rotate the spirometer screw. Now you can see the bubble is just touching to the reference line on the spirit level. Because the steel wire is very strong, by loading, the elongation may not be very large. Therefore, to observe the little movement of the bubble, it is a good practice to keep the bubble just to touch the reference line. Otherwise, it is difficult to observe the elongation if you keep the bubble in the middle between the reference lines. At this stage, we say that our setup is at zero load condition. Now, I will add 1 kg weight gently to the experimental wear and leave it for 2 minutes to complete the elongation process. Meanwhile, I can check the reading on the circular disk which is 64 under zero load condition. I will note it down. After waiting for 2 minutes, as you can see, the bubble has been moved away from the reference line, which means the wire has been elongated. Now, I will bring back the bubble to its initial position by rotating the screw clockwise. Now, I can see the reading on the circular scale disk is 8. I will note it down. That is our first set of reading for 1 kg while loading. I have taken data up to 6 kg in a step of adding 1 kg each time. Similarly, I have reduced the load in a step of 1 kg until zero load condition is reached. The data is tabulated and the total extension is calculated as shown in the table. Observations The length of the experimental wire is 1 meter equals to 100 centimeter. The mean diameter of the wire is 0.053 cm. The least count of the spirometer is 0.001 cm. I have plotted load versus extension graph. On x-axis, I have plotted extension in millimeter. On y-axis, I have plotted load in kilogram. The scale factor for the graph on x-axis is 10 divisions equals to 0.5 mm, 1 division equals to 0.05 mm. And on y-axis, 10 division equals to 1 kilogram, 1 division equals to 0.1 kilogram. The graph shows it's a straight line passing through the origin. This is the verification of Hooke's law. The slope of the graph AC by BC is 3.6 kg by 1.6 millimeter, or M by L is equals to 22,500 grams per centimeter. To find the Young's modulus, we know the acceleration due to gravity g is 980 cm per second square. The mean diameter of the wire is 0.053 cm. The length of the wire l is equals to 100 cm. Therefore, Young's modulus y equals to 4gl by pi d square into m by l. This is the slope. After putting the value, we get 9.20 into 10 to the power 11 dyne per centimeter square. Comparing this result with the table, it confirms that the wire is a steel wire. Precautions Both the wires, experimental and auxiliary, should be of same length, material, and cross section. Measure the diameter of the wire at different positions. Check for its uniformity. Reading should be taken when suspended system is steady and there is no twist in the wire. After adding a load to the hanger, reading should be taken after waiting for 2 minutes so that the elongation of the wire is complete. Slotted weights should be added or removed gently. So these are the step by step procedure to find Young's modulus of a material and verify Hooke's law. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe our channel for more videos. We will see you in the next video.